four certain torques will be introduced in a multibody model. Above all, let us remind that any kind of force will be represented by its resultant value that is a vector f applied on a given point of a given body. Its moment with respect to the center of mass must be also taken into account, but generally it will be done automatically by multipoly programs. Pure torques, that is, those that can replace a set of force whose global resultant is equal to zero, are really useful in formulation. And so these forces can be advantageously replaced by a pure torque that will be introduced in the equations of motion. Finally, any forces on the system must be represented by its constitutive law. A constitutive law is the way the force is related to the kinematics of the system. You can find it for a damper, for, let's say, the force of the, the ground on a tire, or for a spring, for which simply the force is proportional to the spring deformation. These laws must be implemented by the user according to the laws of physics. In a multibody system, forces can be internal to the system, like for instance muscle forces, or external to the system, like for instance ground forces. In the present approach, four kinds of forces will be available to our external, to our internal, to the multibody system. The external forces are the weight and the so-called environment forces. The weight, or the gravity force, if any, is the simplest external force from the modeling point of view. Indeed, its resultant simply applies to the center of gravity of the body, roughly the center of mass and at the same time define the vertical direction. Environment forces denote any kind of force applied externally to the multibody system by its environment. There are a great diversity of environment forces such as impact forces, aerodynamic forces or ground forces such as the force acting from the ground to a tire. In any case, the necessary information will be the application point, the force orientation, and of course the constitutive law that must be provided by the user. The internal forces, the second category, refer to the joint efforts and to the so-called link forces. Joint efforts are typical to multibody system and refer to internal force in a prismatic joint or pure torque in a revolute joint acting between the two concerned bodies in the direction of the joint motion. They will be denoted by the letter capital Q. Let us note that in our approach only the force acting from the parent to the child will be implemented by the user. 
the reaction force will be automatically taken into account by the multibody program. Finally, insofar as a lot of applications contains internal force elements like springs, dampers, actuators, acting between two points, let's say P1 and P2, belonging to two distinct bodies, the so-called link force has been introduced. The hypothesis underlying these forces will be clearly defined and explained in the module. By the way, these forces are really convenient to deal with a lot of applications, for instance, to deal with the modeling of vehicle suspension elements. The only useful information for those forces are the location of the two points, P1 and P2, and, of course, the constitutive law of the force. To conclude, let us show where the above-mentioned forces appear in the matrix form of the equations of motion. The gravity and the environment forces are part of the vector C. Vector Q on the right side of the equations of motion will represent the forces and torques within the joint of the system. One could wonder where the link forces do intervene in the equations. The answer comes from the way they are treated in our approach. The action, let's say the one acting at P1, and the reaction, let's say the one acting at P2, are internally treated as two opposite external forces. And thus, they also will belong to the C vector, exactly as standard environment forces. In this module, you will learn how to deal with all these kinds of forces via examples of increasing difficulty.